Snowflakes have always been characterized by their individuality and uniqueness, but what if I told you there's one snowflake whose defining feature is its never-ending similarity? That's right, friends, my name is Caitlin Fix, and today we're talking about the Koch snowflake. Before diving in, it's important to understand exactly where the Koch snowflake originates. Helge von Koch, an early 20th century mathematician, aptly titled his discovery on a continuous line without tangents constructible from elementary geometry, a really long title that means he found a continuous figure that isn't differentiable anywhere. Other than not being differentiable, the Koch snowflake has another interesting feature. It's a fractal. Actually, it was one of the first fractals to ever be discovered. Fractals are just a never-ending pattern. They're an image that repeat themselves over and over. In other words, they're self-similar. In order to understand the Koch snowflake, let's first take a look at the Koch curve, or one side of the snowflake. First, you start with a line. Then you divide each side into equal thirds and make an equilateral triangle. Repeat this pattern over and over, and eventually, you'll have a Koch snowflake. Here's where things get really interesting. A Koch snowflake has an infinite perimeter, but a finite area. Confused? Let's break it down. When we divide the line into three equal parts, each section is s over three, giving us a total perimeter of s. Moving on to the next part, we can also label both sides of the triangle as s over three. We know this because the triangle is equilateral, meaning all sides are the same length. When we add up the sides, we are left with a perimeter of four s over three. On the next level, we again divide every side into three parts, or a third of a third. This gives us s over 9 for every side. Adding up all the sides gives us a total perimeter of 16s over 9, or 4 squared s over 3 squared. If we were to continue, we would see that the pattern is 4 over 3 to the nth power. Since the Koch curve is only one side of the snowflake, we can multiply 4 over 3 to the nth power by 3 to get the total perimeter. We can plug this into a limits problem and discover that the perimeter of a Koch snowflake is infinity. The area of a Koch snowflake is a little more intricate. Starting with our base equilateral triangle, we know the area formula is the square root of 3 times s squared over 4. When we move on to the next layer, we are adding three new triangles, each with an area of square root of 3 times s over 3 squared all over 4. The reason for the s over 3 is because the side lengths of our triangles now are only one third of the original side length. We continue this pattern on the next level, adding 12 new triangles with a side length of s over 9. If we continue this pattern and simplify the extremely long addition problem, we would be left with a total area of 2 square root 3 times s squared all over 5, a finite area for a fractal with an infinite perimeter.